Hello and welcome back to another unboxing review and run through of the iRig HD2 by IK Multimedia including the installation of Amplitube Tonex and the use of GarageBand for recording. So this product comes pretty well packaged and as you can see on this box it works with Microsoft, Android and Apple products. You can also use it for Musician, Ultimate Guitar, Cubasis, GarageBand and the likes. I use all three of the main ecosystems, but for this video I'll be connecting up to my iPad to use Amplitube Tonex and GarageBand. Now as we open up the box, we can see that we've got our cable box and also our iRig HD2 audio interface. A little bit stubborn to get out the box there, but nicely done. And as we open up our cable box, we get three cables included. We've got a USB-A to micro USB cable, a lightning cable to micro USB, and last but not least, a USB-C to micro USB cable. And that brings us to our audio interface, the iRig HD2. At the bottom, we've got our quarter inch jacks for instrument input, as well as our quarter inch out for either a speaker or cabinet output. We then go on to the side and we've got our through effects, which is to bypass the effects, as well as our volume control wheel. And then if we go around to the side, we've got our gain control. And then at the top, we have our micro USB and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now for this we are going to be using the lightning cable to connect the interface with my iPad. Just simply plug in and insert your quarter inch instrument cable and then you can get started. Now if you haven't already you'll need to open up your app store and download the correct version of Amplitube. For the iPad this is Amplitube Tonex. Now once you've downloaded open the app and you're faced with the main page. Give your guitar a quick strum to check that the input's coming through, as you can see on the top left hand side of the page. And if you've got sound level showing, then we can proceed with the rest of the run through of the app. Just below the levels, we have a noise gate which gives you selected options of threshold, release, and depth. And then next to that is the compressor. And then we go over again to the amp section here where you can see we've got various amps. All the ones in dark grey are part of the uh, upgrade which you have to pay for. Then over from that we then have our cab section where you can select your 4x12s, 2x12s, 8x10s, 6x10s. And then from the cab selection you can then apply reverb. This gives you your standard options as well as being able to select the kind of room style of reverb that you wish. And over from that we have our advanced parameters such as EQ, presence, depth and the mix. And then we head down to the amp. Here you can use your finger to just slide and change the various settings. So power on, you've got your gain, bass, mid, treble, volume, reverb, comp and so forth. And then to the left of that we have the tuner. This gives a nice simple layout and allows you to tune your guitar with speed and accuracy. As you can see it's green when it's good, it's yellow when it's slightly off and it's red when it's completely off. Then on the opposite side of the page we have the VIR tab. The VIR tab allows you to change the placement of microphones as per the grid as you can see there, the two different mics. You can then go in and change the microphones from a condenser, a dynamic or even a ribbon mic and you then have the option to add or remove resonance and also to balance out the microphone mix. Now we'll close that off and we'll go to the section just below the amp head where we have our tone model where you can change the amp outside of the menu and as you can see here when we click on one of the grayed out options it will tell us that we need to upgrade. You can do the Tone Max, which is the standalone for 24999, or you can do a monthly subscription of 999. Now, on from that, we then move on to our preset list where you can save your own presets, you can use some of the existing ones, or you can favorite them. And then on from that, we then have our sound where we can change from wood, space, shine, drop, blue, clean, and so forth. 
And then last at the bottom is our filters tab. Now you can use this to help you navigate along with expanding the bottom section of that menu to the right hand side there. Now last but not least we go into our settings where you can adjust your level in, level out, change your input and output devices as well as a few other settings. Now to record we're going to go out of this and open up GarageBand. And once that's opened, we're going to go create song and then we're going to go along to audio recorder and click instrument. You can then choose whether you want monitoring or not before it loads up the page. And then you check your line is inputting correctly with your level meters, as we can see on the left hand side. You can also use the cog at the top to change the tempo of the track. And once you're happy with what you've done there, we can then go in and we can hit record. We get a quick countdown and you can start to lay down your track. iPad automatically has this set to 8 bars but you can increase that using the plus tab at the end of the bar count. And then once done, what we want to do is we want to open up our timeline using the third icon from the left. And here we can see our audio recording. Now, that is the end of the video, but if you could do me a favour and take a moment to like and subscribe, that would be much appreciated. But till next time, folks, have a good one.